So where's the core supposed to come from? I don't have an answer for you because I don't have any way to, to bring God to you. You have to find it yourself. What is God? What are you talking about? What does God have to do with America? Nothing. Nothing. Obama has run a war against God for seven straight years. He has thrown it out of the military. He's thrown it out of the schools. Crushed monuments with his help from uh, the ACLU. Anyone who's a Christian is afraid to even show their Christianity. Christians are being slaughtered, kidnapped, murdered, enslaved. He says nothing, does nothing. Instead, he supports his Muslim friends who are doing it. So it's a very bad time to be a Christian, worse to be a Jew. He humiliated Benjamin Netanyahu. He marginalized the Jewish people. Just the other day in New York City, I read in the New York Post yesterday, an Arab ran up to two Orthodox Jews in the streets and threw a Molotov cocktail at them. In the streets of New York in the middle of the day, an Arab threw a bottle of flammable liquid at two Jews who were walking around the streets minding their own business, harming nobody. So there's a war going on. I warned you in the last year. I said stop the coming civil war. And you thought I was an alarmist. You said it'll never happen here. Idiot, it is happening here. You have a revolutionary in the White House. You have revolutionaries surrounding the man in the White House. You have revolutionaries in the media. There is a civil war going on. And very few of us see it. And few are still are trying to warn the people like Paul Revere and show you how to stop it before it's absolutely too late. Because once this conflagration gets to a certain critical mass, it will be like a forest fire that you can't stop. When I saw the Million Man March this weekend and I saw one hateful black person after another, one hateful person of color after another, these were not the best and the brightest of the people of color community. I saw them on the ship the other day. When I was aboard the Navy ship, I saw the best and the brightest. But when I see these street radicals speaking every day against white policemen, against white people, against everything that's decent in this country, and not one word was uttered by the sorority in the White House to say this is wrong, I said, boy, the best is yet to come. They have a crescendo waiting for us in the last years of this reign of terror. There's a crescendo coming. And maybe it won't happen. I hope it doesn't. I uh, just hope it doesn't. But anything's possible with government zero. When you have no opposition party to speak of, anything is possible. So that's uh, related to this headline. Obama says, yes, I would win if I ran for president again. That's in the famous Steve Croft interview. Yeah, he said, if I ran again, I would win. Do you hear this? Did you, I don't know if you heard that one. What, what is he implying about that? Did you hear the Nation of Islam speak of Vladimir X railing against whites? Did you hear Jeremiah Wright railing against whites and Jews? Did you hear them chanting, down, down, USA? You didn't hear that? Didn't make it to your local television set while you're drunk watching a football game? This was going on on the National Mall, organized with the help of the sorority and the government. Listen to the speaker in clip 13. This is something that you may have missed while watching sports. Listen to 13. This happened Saturday. We come here in unity because we've been invited by the minister, Louis Farrakhan. And with that power and with Kwame uh, Ture inviting us to Libya, Gaddafi is still alive. What so we on? say, down, down, USA. Down, down, USA. Down, down. Freedom to the Dene people. Yeah, you say she's just a crackpot. What do you care? Really? Then why is she speaking in the National Mall at the invitation of the great genius, Louis Farrakhan? Why would he let people speak saying that uh, the CDC is modifying vaccines to kill black and brown boys unless he wants to stir up hatred and start a civil war? Why? Why would Jeremiah Wright get up and attack Jews like this? A man who's rolling in the fat, in the milk and honey of the land. Why would he hate the country that's given him so much? For the same reason that uh, his boss, Barack Obama, got away with all of this all these years. And then, of course, the, this you missed altogether. Million Man March speaker says every day young black males are being murdered by the blue Ku Klux Klan. You're not going to believe this. The blue Ku Klux Klan, the thin blue line that keeps the animals from destroying your city, 
your town, your village, raping your daughter and burning your house to the ground. Home invasions. It's the thin blue line that keeps them away. Now listen to what went on under the nose of Barack Obama in clips 19 and 20. We've come together today on 10, 10, 15 because we are sick and tired of being sick and tired of scrolling down our timeline on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and every other day we see a young black male being murdered by the Blue Klux Klan. I, I said the Blue Klux Klan. We came today to tell the United States government and all the wicked white oligarchy at the top of the power structure of this world that we love our children the same way you love your children and you cannot kill a man with a bag of Skittles and a tea and get away with it. You cannot kill a man for wearing a hoodie and get away with it. Oh, shut up. You get him off, this. Get him off the air. Shut this illiterate moron criminal off my show. You love your children the same way that you love your children. They want to just stay home and be a father instead of being an animal in the gutter. You love your children? Stay home and raise them. Why don't you show them you love them? Get a damn job and be a role model to your children instead of a loudmouth revolutionary drug-dealing piece of garbage. Wow. And your president said nothing to this hatred. Nothing. Not one word was uttered by anybody in that place called the White House. That shining beacon on the hill. Look what it's become under this man. I blame him for this. He could have stopped it. He could have gone out there and said, this is wrong. We don't need this in our country today. But he didn't. This was, ha this was coordinated with the White House. Because you see, you don't understand something. All of this is happening for a reason, and it's a terrifying reason that all of this hatred's coming to the surface now. You think it's the last days of Barack Obama? You think this is all of this is coming up from the from the from the underworld by accident? I'll tell you why it's happening the minute I return. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Yeah, you get the picture. So uh, as we took a break at the end of the last segment, I implied that I understand why Obama's unleashed the subterraneans upon society and what he tries to do with these speakers in stirring up hatred against whites against white police against europeans and against uh, our nation as a whole and it's obvious to me that he's trying to in his mind in his mind he doesn't want a shooting war what he wants is to motivate millions of non-voters to vote for a democrat period end of story he is so myopic, he's so narrow-minded, he is just simply all he's ever been, which is a small-minded, small-town community organizer. That's what he is. He's learned nothing from being on the world stage. He's still myopically thinking only about advancing his own party. That's all he can think about. And as the world burns, he says, no, the world's not burning. He says, I'm the hero, no, and, and Putin's the loser. He's the little man. Croft tries to get him to admit that he was wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Everyone else is wrong. But what about going up? What's going on in America? Oh, it's fine. Things are better. Crime is down. Economy is great. No, it isn't, Mr. Obama. I'm sorry, got to go right now. So that's what's going on right now. That's what's going on. ISIS never made such gains till he decided to keep his hands off. A nuclearized Iran. He's the only one who agrees that the deal is valid. A conflict with Russia, who was our ally. A global immigration crisis that was triggered by the execution of Gaddafi, engineered by the United States of America. Gaddafi warned that if he was overthrown, his country would become lawless, run by tribes, as Somalia. That's exactly what's happened. Then shifting the arms from, from Libya to Syria. That happened. The whole Arab Spring concept funded by George Soros, enacted by Hillary Clinton, the refugee crisis is a direct result, and not one newsman calls Hillary Clinton on that. That's why they're focused on the emails. Don't you understand it's another Monica Lewinsky false flag? Don't you get it? Why do you think they keep hammering or making believe they're such tough journalists talking about the emails when they know nothing's going to come of it? Because her real crime is the Arab Spring. 
Her real crime is the Arab Spring, which led to the European refugee crisis. That's her real crime against humanity. That's her real failure. That's her real stumbling block. But instead, they falsely focus you on the emails, which will produce nothing because it's in the hands of Obama's FBI. Why do you think the FBI seized the missing emails? To make sure that they can bury them the same way they did the Solyndra millions. Anyone go to jail yet on Solyndra? How about the fake energy plants produced? Well, I can go on and on. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. It's a year later. Ain't nobody come to save us. I'm not waiting for nothing to fall out the sky. I'm not waiting for your national hashtag to come save me. I'm going to do the same thing Zaki Baruti done did. I'm going to do the same thing Anthony Shaheed done did. I'm going to do the same thing Mama Jamala Rogers done did. I'm going to do the same thing Percy Green done did. If you don't know them names, it's because them local names. Them local names with a national impact. So when I tell you we talking about justice or else, only got one thing to say. Ferguson is the or else. Those are the sage words of one of the attendees of the so-called Million Dunce March this weekend. Uh, no doubt stirred on by the dunce in the White House who is stirring up as much hatred as he can against the Caucasian people in plain English. I don't know how else to put it. You know, maybe I have Tourette syndrome. Maybe I've come to understand that's my problem. I have radio Tourette's. I don't know how to mince words. If I knew how to mince words, I would be a politician. I have radio Tourette's, so forgive me for telling it like it is. And these people would not be heard from were it not for the character in the White House. Were it not for the hatred coming out of Obama in his silk smooth delivery, every which way, sending out the signals, saying it's okay now to pop out of the woodwork and spew your hatred, we wouldn't be hearing from these people. But this is the dangerous situation we're in. He's not fighting the external enemies, and he is promoting the internal enemies. A toxic brew indeed. So as I say, you know, you got to go on with your life every day. Did you know what, what news story I broke for you last Friday? I'm the only one in the radio media who got it. Do you remember the story? It's an astonishing story. I put it up on michaelsavage.com. I'm shocked. It was from the Free Beacon, but I saw it from a source before that. U.S. pulls aircraft carrier from the Persian Gulf. Obama suddenly, in the middle of the night, 11 o'clock our time, last Thursday or Friday night, abruptly pulled the USS Theodore Roosevelt out of the Persian Gulf. This is the first time since 2007 that the United States has no aircraft carrier in the sea. He took it out late Thursday night under the lying guise that it was taken out for maintenance. Can you believe that he gets away with a thing like this? The ship has 5,000 troops and 65 combat planes. And Obama abruptly removed this ship from the Persian Gulf. Why did he do it? He didn't do it for maintenance. I told you why I think he did it. He did it because he was afraid the Russians would sink it. That's how sad this country has become under this man in the White House. Now, you say, oh, look, I've heard it before, Mike. Get off the Obama bashing. I can't get off it. There's no way to stop it. The man is a disaster. He's going to destroy all of us unless somebody steps in and says it. I'm saying it. A few others are saying it. There's not a few, there's not a lot of us left who are willing to even say it. Steve Croft on CBS News tried to take the charlatan on. We have that sound. We have one person in the electronic media other than the few people in radio who dare take on the charlatan, the conniver in the White House. Steve Croft challenged him on every level. And the snake thought that he charmed everybody with his lies because he's gotten away with it all his life. Ever since he's been a little child, this kid has gotten away with anything he wanted because he's a silk smooth, pathological liar, possibly mentally ill. Now, all of that wouldn't matter to me if he wasn't the commander in chief. We are losing the war against the most dangerous terrorist the world has ever seen. We're losing it. You know, the news is so bad that I dare not give it to you. But I realize I'm getting agitated. It's only Monday. This weekend was Fleet Week in San Francisco. The whole week is Fleet Week, and Navy ships come in, and 
I usually get invited aboard a warship. I went aboard the USS Somerset, which is an amphibious landing ship and trans it's an amphibious 